guys, what's up? It's Jared Huber, and welcome to my mid-2018 setup tour. So this setup is completely different to the last one, as you guys can see. I've changed around just about everything, and I think it's a lot more clean and minimal. The goal of this setup is to allow me to make all of my videos in one location. So all my videos can be made from this one desk. I shoot here, I edit here, I do everything here, and it's a lot cleaner. My old setup was completely full of soft boxes and other lights and all kinds of other technology. I had like three setups in one room. It was just way too complicated and crowded. So I wanted to simplify that by a whole lot. So let's just go and go through all the components of this new setup. And if you guys see anything at all that you wanna check out, I'll have everything linked in the kit down in the description. So just follow the link at the top of the description, which is at the top of all of my videos now, and you'll get a full list of all of my gear with links to be able to purchase any of it. So let's get started. So the first component of the setup is the desk. This is an Ikea Girton tabletop sitting on top of two Alex drawer units. I chose this tabletop for the nice light wood look for the background of my videos, but also because it's nice and big and made of solid wood, which means it can hold plenty of weight and it's very strong. The Alex drawer units are used to hold most of my speed cubes, so almost all of the drawers are filled with cubes and the two top drawers on the right are just filled with all kinds of random tools and other things that I may need from time to time, but just don't need to be out in the open. My chair is just a random racer chair from Staples, I think. It's quite comfortable and it works well, and it also keeps some of that red from my previous fully red chair. The room lights are the same ones I've been using for so many years now, but I now have some Philips LED light bulbs in there. They're much cooler, but are still really bright. Mostly I just keep the overhead ones on, but when I record, I turn on the directional ones to light up my background some more. So the main beast powering this entire setup is the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro in space gray, fully maxed out. This thing is a total beast and it's handled everything I've thrown at it so far with no problem. So I've been very happy with it. All the ports are filled and I haven't been experiencing the dongle life too heavily myself. One port is for power, one is for my larger USB hub, one's for the monitor and one is for the monitor USB hub. So the only dongles I need are the USB-C to A cables. I'll also be getting a hyperdrive soon for when I'm traveling, which you can hardly call a dongle. So it hasn't been too much of a problem so far. I gotta make sure this thing is well protected. So I have a screen protector, a keyboard cover and a skin on this computer. I'm using the black leather skin from dbrand and it looks really nice when it's clean. It does get fingerprint marks pretty easily though, but I know it'll protect the laptop really well. So I'm not too worried. I've been using dbrand skins on my devices for years and I've never had a problem with durability. I chose this computer over the 5k iMac for a number of reasons, but mainly for portability and because I don't need to have the entire computer taking up a ton of space on the desk. I prefer to have this single larger monitor in the center so that I can connect consoles and other devices instead of having it inseparably linked to my computer. Speaking of the monitor, this is a Dell P2715Q 27 inch 4K monitor. I've had this thing for a couple of years and I love it. It's not totally color accurate, but I just use my laptop screen for color correction anyways. That monitor is sitting on top of a black monitor stand so that I can get this thing above my laptop screen. To the left of the monitor is this Blu-ray player so I can watch movies. I do actually collect Blu-rays, so I gotta be able to watch them. On the right side underneath the monitor stand is this stealthy little SD card reader that I have mounted using some double-sided tape. This helps keep the setup nice and minimal and reduces the need for another dongle, and it's barely even noticeable if you're not looking for it, which is really clean. As for my peripherals, right now I'm just using a standard Apple wireless keyboard with the butterfly switches. I actually really like how this keyboard feels and I honestly don't miss my mechanical keyboard all that much, especially because of how light and small this keyboard is. I gotta make sure that it's really easy to clear the desk off for what I'm filming and this keyboard allows me to do that. As for my mouse, I'm still using the same MX Master mouse. This is the best mouse I've ever used and it's still going strong. My current mouse pad is the cube with the cubicle.us stack mat. So now getting onto some of the stuff on the left side, we have my current phone of choice, which is the original Google Pixel. I will be switching to whatever the newest iPhone is when it comes out, however, just because the compatibility between Macs and iPhones is so awesome. Then we have my headphones, which are still the Audio-Technica ATH M50s in red. This is still the only pair of over-ear headphones I've ever bought, and they've worked great for the many years that I've had them. The headphones are on this Kozu headphone stand. This stand has two power outlets and three USB charging ports, which is really handy for when I need to quickly plug something in, since I don't really have easy access to a wall outlet. The only thing I have consistently plugged in is this retractable USB-C cable that I use to charge my phone. The audio device of choice is still the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. This powers the headphones and also my mic, which we'll get to in a bit. The XLR cable for my mic is just being directed back by this little cable drop. Next to that are my two hard drives. These are both Western Digital portable hard drives, and I like them because they're cheap, light, 
work perfectly, and don't make any noise. One of my biggest gripes with the old setup was how loud all of the external drives are. This setup is much simpler. I just have a two terabyte drive for storage and a four terabyte drive for backing up the storage drive as well as the internal drive of my computer. The internal drive on my laptop is big enough and fast enough that I no longer need a Thunderbolt RAID for editing, which is super nice. Now moving over to the right side, we have my PS4 Slim that I do all of my gaming on. On top of that PS4 is another Western Digital four terabyte drive for storing my digital games, which I have a fair amount of. I'm also using this nifty little three inch USB-A to micro B to connect the hard drive since the included cable is just a few inches too long. In the other USB port is a retractable micro USB cable for charging my scuff controller. I'm using the scuff impact controller and I love it. It's got control freaks on the thumbsticks as always as I can't really play without them. So if we go ahead and take a look behind the desk now, we can see that the cable management isn't perfect. A lot of the cables are hidden pretty well, but unfortunately because this setup has a lot of moving parts, some cables simply can't be hidden. This is pretty much as clean as it's going to get and it definitely looks a lot better than it used to. Underneath the desk we have a few things mounted as well. On the left side under my PS4 is my Elgato HD60 which is what allows me to capture all of my gameplay. In the middle behind the power strip is an IKEA Signum cable management holder. These things are super helpful. And then on the right side is where I have my USB hub mounted. This hub is actually pretty easy to access if I ever need to add or remove anything. And it's nice that it's off the desk out of view. All right, so now let's go ahead and get on to what I think is the really exciting part of this setup, which is how I use this setup to record. It took me a while to get all of these parts together and it was sort of complicated to figure out. But now that it's done, making videos is super simple. And the nice part is that if you guys wanna do something similar to what I've done, I'm gonna be explaining how this all works. So let's start with lighting. I decided I I wanted to move away from soft boxes because they were too bulky and hot. I figured LED panels would be the best solution, but I didn't want something that had too much output and produced too harsh of a light. But I finally found these really awesome Yongnuo YN600 Air LED panels. These things are super lightweight, can be powered using DC power cables, and have this built-in milk diffuser that seriously creates soft box levels of diffusion for a fraction of the size and very minimal heat. And they only cost 80 bucks a piece, which is really not all that bad considering the price of many other LED panels. These lights produce just enough output for what I need and they really fit in the setup perfectly. However, I also needed a way to position the lights without having to set up and tear down a bunch of light stands that would just get in the way every time I wanted to record. So I mounted two of the lights to these Rode microphone arms. These arms are really sturdy and big so I can really extend the lights quite far. I just have all the lights plugged into this power strip mounted to the side of the left drawer unit so I can turn all of them on and off with just one flick. This makes it dead simple to set up the lights without them being in the way all the time. When I want to record, I can just pull the lights forward and flick the switch, and when I'm done, I can just push them back out of the way. This is a really easy way to keep everything feeling nice and open, so I'm not always being surrounded by lights all the time. The setup for this is pretty straightforward. I just have the lights attached to ball heads, which are attached to the mic arm. That way I can position the lights as I need them. So the setup is pretty cool, but I also needed a third overhead light, and I really didn't want to get a third microphone arm. I realized that with three lights on the mic arms, along with the actual mic stand and tripod, that I wouldn't really be making much progress towards simplifying the setup. So that's when I decided to ditch the tripod altogether and kill two birds with one stone and use a C-stand. So that is what I have over the top of the desk. If you guys don't know, C-stands are basically just really sturdy and heavy light stands, but they're incredibly versatile and can be used for many different things. In this case, mounting two cameras and an LED panel at once. So let's break down all the parts of this C-stand. So this C-stand comes from newer and included the horizontal pole along with two knuckles. One of the knuckles is used to mount the horizontal pole to the vertical one, and the other knuckle is used to mount the third LED panel. To mount the panel, I used a spigot with a 5 8 stud and a quarter 20 thread. The 5 8 end goes into the knuckle, leaving the quarter 20 thread open so that the panel can screw into it. Then on the end of the pole, I've mounted a heavier duty ball head. This is where my camera snaps in thanks to the quick release plate which makes it dead simple to set up my camera to record. Although it may seem a bit precarious, I've got three sandbags on the stand to make sure it's counterbalanced properly, so it's not going anywhere. As a result, the camera does record the image upside down, so that means I just have to flip it in post, but that does make it a little tricky to view what I'm actually doing when I'm recording. 
So I used this cheap little camera monitor. In the settings, I flipped the image so that when I connect the camera, it appears to be right side up from my perspective. The monitor is attached to this small little Manfrotto tabletop tripod, and on the back is a Sony NPF to DC power adapter, meaning I can power this monitor using NPF batteries instead of a power cable. To connect the camera, I just have this HDMI cable attached up here, which then goes to this HDMI output that's resting next to the monitor stand with another cable drop. This makes it super simple to set everything up and get recording. Are you guys seeing a pattern here? The goal of this setup is really to make it as easy as possible for me to create my videos. The less of a hassle it is to set everything up and start shooting, the more videos I can produce. Finally, the last component of the C-Stand is the Sony a6000, which I use as a webcam and also as a B-cam for when I record. This is mounted via the hot shoe to a friction arm mounted to the C-Stand. For power, it would be way too much of a hassle to be constantly changing the batteries when I'm trying to live stream or just record, so I have an AC power adapter coming out of the bottom. This adapter uses a dummy battery to connect to the camera and then goes to a wall outlet to keep the camera constantly powered. Then I have this micro HDMI cable running to an Elgato cam link, which transfers the video signal coming from the camera into a USB signal that can be read as a webcam. That way I can stream at a much higher quality and it also makes it easier to record my B cam for normal videos. So that's it for the C stand setup. Now let's talk about audio. I've been using a really annoying mic stand to mount my mic for years and it's really hard to deal with. It's always getting in the way or falling over and I figured there must be a better solution. So this is what I came up with. This is a Rode NTG4 Plus shotgun mic, which is the mic I use for literally everything now, from recording videos to talking on Skype to live streaming. I do it all from this one desk, so I only need one mic. To boom the mic, I've used the top part of my old mic stand and attached it to the tripod legs of an old tripod. Throw in a sandbag and you've got yourself a properly counterbalanced mic stand that isn't going to get in the way all the time. So when I want to use the mic, I just lose Loosen this screw and pull it forward directly into the exact position it needs to be in for the clearest audio. This is a really clean and simple solution to a problem that I've been having for years with a normal mic stand. However, I still wanted to be able to switch the mic between the stand and the camera. If I need to record any kind of cube sounds, like for when I'm recording solves or anything like that, or just any other kind of directional sounds, I need to be able to mount this mic to the camera hot shoe. So I devised this little mounting system, which has quite a few parts. So I'll go ahead and break it down. First, there is a female 5 8 to male quarter 20 adapter on the end of the mic stand so that I can screw in another one of those ball heads that I used for the LED panels. That way I can position the mic wherever I need it. Attached to the ball head is a cold shoe mount, which is what the Rode SM3R shock mount attaches to. This is what the mic itself attaches to and it always stays on there. So when I want to move the mic from the stand to the camera, I just unscrew the shock mount, pull it off the stand, and pop it right on top of the camera. Easy. This is actually a relatively simple setup. It just requires quite a few adapters. So that's about it for the main desk, but since I do record all of my videos here, I obviously need a place to put my camera and a bunch of other things that I need to access frequently, but I don't want on the main desk all of the time. So to the left of the main desk is this little Ikea Linman table. This is actually the table that I used to record all of my videos on before switching to the wood desk. On here we have things like my actual camera, the Panasonic GH5, all kinds of batteries, my other webcam, my camera monitor, even this nice little spotlight that I use to just barely illuminate the room when I want to work in lower light. As you guys can see, I have another one of those quick release plates mounted to the desk so that the camera can sit flat. And I also have another quick release plate on top of this little tabletop tripod that I use to get all of my talking headshots in all of my videos. I also use it for recording solves at comps since it can get the camera to a nice elevation. It's quite compact for how far it can really extend and it's quite sturdy as well. Resting up against the table is my main tripod from Manfrotto. The legs are the MT-190X Pro 3 legs and the head is the 502 Fluid Head. This tripod is used to record solves as well well as get all of my product shots for a review. And on top of that is of course another quick release plate. I really love these things and I can't believe I didn't discover them earlier. It makes it so simple to switch between mounts and it means I never have to go unscrewing and switching out tripod plates again, which is super nice. Attached to the side desk, we also have this Audio-Technica headphone hanger holding the Turtle Beach PX24 headset. I use this headset for my PS4 and I love the sound quality. It's also really comfortable. And finally, the last thing in my setup is this Rubik's Cube mini fridge. This has been in the background of quite a few videos and you guys have been asking about it. It's not a functional puzzle, but it can keep a few drinks cold. I have no idea if you guys can even buy it. My parents bought it for me for Christmas from a guy on Facebook, I think, so 
Who knows? Anyways, guys, that just about does it for this 2018 setup tour. I put a lot of work into making this setup as functional yet beautiful as it can get, and I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end. I've been conceptualizing a setup like this for years, and it's taken me until now to make it a reality. So I just want to thank you guys all so much for making this possible. We just hit 250,000 subscribers, which is an absolutely monumental milestone, and I honestly can't thank you guys enough for a quarter million subscribers. That is just crazy. You guys are so amazing. Anyways, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button, turn notifications, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.